Orioles General Manager Mike Elias, thank you for being with us. Thanks, Kevin. It has been 1,246 days, probably seems like more since you were officially hired by the Orioles. Uh, a lot of stuff has happened since then, obviously, in and out of the baseball world. What have you learned in that time? Boy, I mean, uh, so much of our time here has been colored by some really strange global events and having the whole sport uh, turned on its head for a couple of years with COVID and most recently the lockout. Um, so that has certainly been a unique experience for me, uh, different than anything I've, I've had to manage around in, in my baseball career. Um, but I think that uh, overall, um, the experience here with the Orioles has been so stimulating for everybody in our group who came aboard, um, knowing what a big project this was to reboot this franchise, um, not just in terms of a normal talent, or a normal rebuild where you're worrying about bringing young talent into the organization via the draft and via the trades, which has obviously been a huge part of what we've been doing since the end of 2018 when we came on, but more so the building of infrastructure, creating departments from scratch, the analytics department, in the international department first and foremost, um, kind of playing catch up with our peers in the industry, doing a lot of hiring. Um, it's been an enormous project and it's been very invigorating. And I look up now and while we've endured some strange events that have set back aspects of our minor league schedule, um, while we still have a very long ways to go and while we've been through a, a lot of losses at the major league level the last couple of years, I look up and you know we're exactly where we need to be, which is w with one of the best young groups of talent in, in all of baseball and with our capabilities uh, across all areas totally built up to above or at industry standards and the best in the industry standards. So I think we've got a great future ahead of us and I think that future's drawing nearer and nearer by the day. I know you don't like to make public proclamations about timelines necessarily. I'm sure you had a vision in your head, though, when you got the job in 2018. As you look back to what you thought then, and you look at where the organization is about three and a half years later, how does this compare to where you thought you might be? I think it's pretty close because, I mean, look, this, the, 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 any timeline you were looking at with the Orioles rebuild was going to be towards the longer end of, of anything you can imagine because of the division that we're in with four other behemoths in one way, shape, or form. Uh, the position that we were starting from at the end of 2018, which was 115 lost season with a lowly rated farm system, no international pipeline established, um, some a lot of infrastructure that was behind uh, in the way that other teams do business, and then frankly, some underwater contracts. There wasn't a whole lot going for us. Um, we know that we're in a uh, market size that is down there in our division. You know, we've got Tampa, but the other three are, are huge um, media and, and global cities. So we knew this was going to be a long-term project, uh, but I think especially with losing the minor league season in 2020, having the shortened draft, all of the difficulties that we've worked around, now being at this place where we've got this great uh, uh, compilation of young talent up and down the system. We've got all this stuff up and running. And um, we've got uh, some really nice pieces here on the major league team and uh, kind of a, a blank slate before us in terms of the payroll for the major league team for the next few years. We're in a great spot and uh, the next few years are going to be very fun. I think the only thing that would hesitate me putting any timelines are just how difficult the, uh, the opponents are in our division. Since you mentioned the division, it's a division with great teams, a division with big cities. You've built this program into something that, in terms of analytics and data, seems to be on par with other franchises. But every major league team, to an extent, has a similar playbook now, right? StatCast data, TrackMan data is widely available. When every team has a similar pool of data, but there are other teams that are always going to be in different market sizes, how do you find the advantage? Yeah, it's very, very hard. I've twice been with organizations uh, that we really had a leg up analytically for a year or two um, at, at various points in time. It doesn't last very long because of how uh, quickly people tend to follow around the industry. Um, and now I, I kind of feel like there's um, a, a flat period around the industry where everyone's making decisions in, in similar ways. Um, and what's important to us is having 
the people and the know-how in-house to where we're positioning ourselves to hopefully carve out a little advantage um, in a certain area, which will only last a year or two even if it does. Um, but just getting caught up, uh, I think, is a huge achievement for this uh, organization because it had been behind a lot of these areas where we just didn't have the staffing and the investment necessary to get up to speed. Um, and when you use analytics nowadays in sports, it's not just about which pitch to throw and positioning your infielders and winning major league games. It's making the right draft pick and uh, coaching your minor league players a certain way or knowing when to promote them. It's just really everything that you do is colored um, by the, these, these info streams and the, the lessons about the game that we glean from them. So I think we're in, in great shape there, but it's, it's really um, you know, a very uh, tight pace across the industry in terms of how people are moving along in this space.